the runes and fumes. I'm Lauren and I'm here to in the kitchen to do a little cooking. We've had some time to experiment on a few things and still not very good at it but I'll tell you what we're gonna knock out uh, something real simple that everybody could do in the kitchen and all the kids something little little treat that they can make. Uh, this is from uh, the Sorcerer's Stone I believe uh, where Hagrid has the kids over for tea and he gives them rock cakes. Well, almost breaks their teeth, but he, uh, you know, they, they try to choke them down. Well, today we're gonna make some rock cakes and uh, I've got all the ingredients laid out here. Uh, so if you'll uh, join me, we'll put this stuff together and see what we can come up with. Uh, I think it'll be fun. Something that everybody can do in the kitchen, kids included. Give them something to do on those days where you can't get outside and play. If it's anything like it is here, it's it's a furnace outside in Southern California or Central California. So uh, we try to stay inside as much as we can under the air conditioning or by the pool. If we had one, and uh, do all those things that muggles love to do. So let's dive right in and see what we can do with making these these rock cakes. Now I'm using this cookbook. The unofficial Harry Potter cookbook, which has great recipes in there, if you could pronounce some of the names, some of the ingredients, uh, it's by Dinah Buchholz. I hope I'm saying that right, but uh, it's it's fun. It's where I made the toad and hole, and uh, so we're just gonna go right by the recipe and see how we come up with this. Well, first of all, I've got all my ingredients out here. Now, I'm not. I'm not a good cook, never said it was. Uh, just ask my wife, it's horrible. But we're gonna throw some, some stuff all in this thing together and see if we can make it work. First thing we need to do is to preheat the oven at 350 degrees. So we will set that up and start it. So it'll start heating up. And then we said we have to grease a large cookie sheet. Well, I have a large, large cookie sheet right here. And we need to grease it. So, oh, I'm grabbing. I've got a little grease here. Now, you guys might have other ways of doing these things, and shh, comment, please, comment down below. Let me know if I've got if there's better ways to do this. This is how my mom used to do it. She'd take some Crisco, put it on a paper towel, and then proceed. To put it on the pan or whatever she needs to. I remember growing up, you know, back back in the 60s, 70s, mom had a big old jar of the Crisco grease can, but it didn't have the grease in it. Then it just had bacon grease in it, and sausage grease, and ham grease, and any other kind of greases, oils that she'd collect, and she'd use that to make gravy and Mother good stuff, but I think that's from the old Oklahoma days. So I've got this greased up. And we're gonna have to put a little flour on it. So I've got the flour here. And I will use a little scoop, scoop out a little bit, sprinkle it on, and then I think you're just supposed to shake it around. At least that's what I think I saw one of the cooking shows do. Sometime my wife had it on there. All right. <clears throat> so I've got a greased and floured cookie sheet. We'll set that aside. We'll be needing that in a little bit. Now, Combine flour, sugar, baking powder, cinnamon, and salt in a large mixing bowl. Okay, I need two cups of flour. Okay, there's one cup. Two cups. Now, two cups of flour, and we 
sugar. Sugar is a half a cup of granulated sugar. Well, I got the sugar right here. And I have half a cup. So we're going to combine half a cup sugar with flour. Come on, more sugar. Need more sugar. Sure. All right, cinnamon. We need one teaspoon of. A little spoon. Okay. Uh, baking powder. We need uh, one teaspoon of baking powder. So where's my one or half? Um, one teaspoon of baking powder. Not baking soda. Baking powder. Okay. Throw that in. Of course. Okay, we need cinnamon, which is a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Have you guys tried that cinnamon challenge? I haven't. I, 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 those, watching those videos, those guys are gagging on that stuff. Nah. Why? Anyway, let me tell you, I've done plenty of other stuff when I was younger. I didn't need to do that one. All right, uh, cinnamon and salt. How much salt? A quarter teaspoon of salt. I got a half, but I got a quarter teaspoon of salt. I got a little salt shaker here, we just use it. Here, half a teaspoon of salt. All right, put that on there good. Or when somebody goes to use that, they'll have a mess. Um, all right, with your fingertips, rub the buttery, rub the butter into the dry ingredients till the mixture reaches the consistency of wet sand. Now let me make sure that I'm cleaned up. So I can, I can mix the stuff with my hands. With the butter though, we got to cut it into chunks. Got one stick to cut into chunks. So let's set that there a second. I've got my, my cube of butter. Hopefully this is going to work right. Like I said, and if anybody's got any helpful hints, anything I need to, I could do different, do better, let me know because I don't mind doing these. Just wish I knew how to, if I'm doing it right, wrong, and different. Try to follow the recipe. And it says cut them into chunks. So we're going to chunk the butter, not the fingers, just the butter. So what have you guys been doing during this quarantine time? Anybody doing anything exciting? Going anywhere that you can go to? On June 1st, we were able to go ahead and go camping. We went up into the Eastern Sierras, up the I by Mammoth area, the June Lake Loop, went some fishing, caught some nice trout. Had a nice time, but we were with our families, with our trailers, our RVs, so we were socially distanced. And whenever we went out somewhere, we wore masks and did what we needed to do. But we did get some good fishing in and we got some good quality time. Now, we're still waiting for Universal Studios to open up so we can go down and, and, uh, and go visit Hogs meat and get some butter beer and eat at the three broomsticks, but they're trying. They're trying to get that stuff opened up. But until until they do, we're gonna do the best we can with what we've got, which is rubbing cube butter into flour and sugar. So, with your fingertips, rub the butter into the dry ingredients until the mixture reaches the consistency of wet sand. I haven't been to the beach yet. Have you guys been to the beach? 
You know, I'm kind of worried about that. People out there with about the masks on, you know. I don't get a real crazy. Oh, I've got 350 degrees. So we'll mix this in here. Grab some more. Mix it in. I kind of grew up going over to the beach. We're, like I said, I'm on the West Coast. So we'd go, when I grew up, I was up in Morro Bay, Cayucas, Cambria, San Simeon, Hearst Castle. Loved going to Hearst Castle. Now, when I got older, we got toys, so we'd go to Pismo and go ride the razors and quads and, and all the, the toys. But now it looks like they're having trouble with that too and wanting to shut it down. I hope they don't. I hope they let us go and, and camp on the beach. And, because, I mean, that builds memories of your family. Pismo looks a lot like Shell Cottage, where Ron, Harry, and Hermione went to get away from Malfoy Manor, where Dobie is buried. Dobie, Dobby, I call him Dobie, but um, real pretty. You can drive out on the beach, or you used to be able to drive out on the beach and. Look for sand dollars and sand crabs and and just have a nice time. All right, well that's mixed up. I don't know if it's wet sand. Kind of is. Could you see Haggard doing this? Those hands. He's probably makes a big old huge big old tub of of rock cakes. All right, now I got the wet sand. Beat the egg. Oh, why do I gotta beat the egg? Poor egg, egg didn't do nothing to me. Why do I gotta beat it? Anyway, beat the egg together with the milk and pour it into the flour butter mixture. Okay. I'll get that. Okay. How much milk do I need? I need uh, one large egg. Okay. One large egg and milk. We need a third of a cup of whole milk. So that milk. Uh, got a measuring cup. And there's my one third mark. All right. So now we beat this together. Now see, look, you got flour, you got sugar, you got a little cinnamon, a little salt, a little baking powder. Not baking soda, baking powder. Milk, egg, and we're gonna mix mix little desserts. All right. Pour the mixture in, into the flour and butter mixture. Fold it together using a spatula to form a stiff dough. So pour it in. Uh, got the spatula. Now let's see if we can mix this together. really looking good. I'm not a baker. Last time we were at Universal Studios and we went to Hogsmeade, we got ourselves a, a cauldron cake. I'll tell you, that was good. Chocolatey, it was delicious. Definitely going to have another cauldron cake. All right. Okay. This is getting stiff. 
but it still looks like I need to add some more. I'm gonna grab a different type of spatula, a metal one, see if I can chop this up a little bit better. You wanna get a good mix on it. Fold it in. Parents might have to help their kids do this part because it's it's stiff. And we're not even to the the best part I think yet. That's good. All right, drop dough, okay. Fold in the raisins. So I need to get a cup of raisins. So I've got my cup. And the raisins. don't like raisins. I'm sure you could probably use any dried fruits that you want to. So if my family does not like raisins, this batch of rock cakes is going to be mine. I'll take them to work and I'm sure that somebody might like them there too. Again, you could probably leave out the raisins if you didn't like raisins or put in a different type of a, of a dried fruit. All right, we're gonna try to make this work. Okay, now is where we get to. Uh, you take uh, a rough dough, drop dough by a round of teaspoon two inches apart on the prepared cookie sheet. Well, we have the prepared cookie sheet. We gotta... Spoon. And... And take it... Well, I'm just gonna round it. Hey, do whatever you feel like doing. I'm gonna... It says this makes 12, but the way I make them, Makes a little bit more. I like smaller cakes. I kind of flatten them out. And we Put them in the cook dough or in the cook sheet. Just like this. Now we're going to put it in the oven and cook for 25 minutes. So, I'll probably take a little break right here, and I'll be back when these are ready to come out of the oven. We'll see you then. I just wanted to read you a little bit out of this, this book, like I said, by uh, the Unofficial Harry Potter Cookbook by Dinah Buchholz. It says, Rock Cates, standard with tea, 
look like but don't taste like rocks. Unless, of course, you leave them out for several days, which is probably what Hagrid did. Rock cakes have a short history and seem to have been invented by Victorians. And it says, uh, for rock hard cakes like Hagrid's, just bake them for too long and eat them a week later at your own risk. Now, we don't want to do that. We want to have nice, fresh rock cakes. And I don't know about you, I'm not a huge tea drinker. I do enjoy a glass of tea. I have more coffee. But uh, might try these with a, a nice cup of hot Earl Grey. Or, uh, or with me, it's, it's my coffee. I'll have it with my coffee. And I, I've had them before. I wanted to test it out. So they're good. Um, again, I've used raisins in mine, like the recipe says. This will be just what the recipe called for. And, uh, but I think you could either leave them out or put in another type of dried fruit. Whatever you would like to do. Maybe even some walnuts, some crushed walnuts, some uh, almonds, something like that. If you, if you like nuts in your rock cakes. Uh, so there's, there's other things you could do with that recipe. It's very, very simple, very easy. Kids will love it. I want to remind you, kids, if your parents let you do this, please clean up after yourself. Help them out. Put the dishes in the sink and, and wipe down the counters just to help them out. I know it's been a rough time for them too during this quarantine. And if you can, if you can do just a little bit for them every day, that'd be great. They'd really appreciate it. And there's my alarm. So we're going to see what these things come out like. All right. Yeah. Safety first. Yeah, safety first. Oh. Look at that. I've got a few more here I'm going to throw in. And set the timer again. For the last time this time. There they are. Hey, there's, there's your rock cakes with the raisins. Nice and brown. Let them cool a little bit and we'll try one. Since it's 115 degrees outside, I might not have hot coffee or hot tea. I might just have some water with Whatever beverage you enjoy drinking would be just fine. Uh, with tea, orange juice, water, coffee, a nice stout ale. What it, what it. But uh, they they look delicious. Let's. So, gonna get a nice one here. So it looks in half, all done. Like I said, they're just little cakes. Cinnamon, that's just that little small amount of cinnamon. It does wonders for it. Just gives you that hint of a cinnamon flavor to it that it just makes them. And uh, you know, the raisins, raisins and cinnamon, delicious. I give this a, a 10 out of 10 because there's, there's other things you can do to it. You can, like I said, you can add nuts or different types of fruits or leave out the fruit. But two of these, for breakfast, you know, if you need those little snack for breakfast or maybe mid-morning, take one, heat it up in the microwave for 15 seconds, just to give it that that little that that hot biscuit effect to your flavor. Be great. I've had it anyway. So I hope I didn't do Dinah too much of a disgrace, and I hope you enjoy the rock cakes. So until next time, 
This is Lauren, and, uh, and I'll see you back here with Runes and Fumes. Thank you. Bye.